Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda used to drink here. It literally, if it got raided, you ran out the side door over here. My greatest friendships, my greatest moments, my greatest relationships, it all starts at the table. For dessert, this restaurant actually has the biggest collection of Madeiras in the city right now. You know, I, I didn't know that our founding forefathers drank this when they signed the Declaration of Independence, but, you know, it makes sense because they came over, you know, during these voyages, and that's how Madeira started. It was literally like an accident because it was being cooked as it was in the holes of ships. And it's amazing because we have Madeiras all the way back to 1908. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. Wow, oh God. He brought out my dad's birth year. Oh, it seems appropriate. It seems appropriate. It does. Um, so we have a 94 Malvasia, a 89 Circeal, and a 1927 Bastardo. Wow. And the 1927 is so, so meaningful to me. It was a huge, huge year in New York. Yankees win the World Series, <laughs> Murderers Row. The first transatlantic flight happens between New York and Paris, the first solo transatlantic flight. And it's also my father's birth year. What a year. Yeah. What a year yeah. to be alive. We have the last of uh, the 1927 Bastardo Madeira uh, in the world. So oh there were goodness. about eight bottles left and Nathan searched like the world. No, we're just going to do the no 27. Where no, did you find no it? Option. Uh, the 27 is one of those now we have to beg, borrow, steal, and cheat just to get a bottle here and there. Wow. Cheers, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Well, then I think we should definitely raise a glass to your dad. Yeah, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Last night on Earth, death row, what's the last meal that you would have? I'm not going first. Now it's, it's on you. I want food in my mouth. <laughs> I've thought about this so many times and it's changed it's so, so hard. many times. About this? Oh, I think about oh, it yeah. all the time. It's dark and I like it. Death row meal? Yes, I think about it all the time. Mine is my dad's uh, my dad's pork with salt egg. And I don't know what you call it, but when I die, I want to be buried with it. Like it's <laughs> so damn good. He would take uh, ground pork. Okay. And he wouldn't season it at all. He'd put like a little cornstarch in it he would lay it out in the bottom of a shallow bowl and there are these, you know, like the cured duck eggs, but they're just so flavorful and it takes like 53 days to cure them. And he cracks the eggs over the pork and then he puts it in a steamer and steams it and we would have that and white rice. Yeah. And that's it. Mm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That, that's my death row meal. Wow. Yeah. It's so special. So this is the Madeiras and, and this whole collection. It's like definitely one of my loves. And so, you know, so speaking of that New York history, Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda used to drink here. It literally, if it got raided, you ran out the side door over here and the door still exists, which is so exciting. Yeah. This is another dish that I think very much pays homage to, to New York. But I realize that, you know, we don't really have anything that is so unequivocally New York. And so I started going through all of these amazing time periods in New York that we love. If Frank Sinatra and Ava Gardner were here today, what would they be eating? If they were at my restaurant right now, what would they be having? And the answer was pineapple upside down cake. Yeah. I think they would be smoking cigarettes. I think they would be drinking their rum and coke. And I think they would be having pineapple upside down cake. So we did a pineapple tart to 10 with Havana Club rum um, and made a beautiful caramel and, and all of the pineapples are, are caramelized in the pan. It's got a little bit of puff pastry. And then instead of like the maraschino cherries actually in the cake, we've done maraschino cherries uh, and Tahitian vanilla ice cream. And then there's a little bit more of, uh, of the rum flambéed and done table sides. So I'm gonna let you guys get in. Awesome. Like, just just ourselves? Yeah. Just, just like, do it. Like, yeah. I don't even know why we have plates. Like, we should just do it. Just do it. Can we yeah. also just recognize the, it's an irony, but it's just such an amazing accomplishment that as you talk about all of this history, American history, New York history, and, you know, some of the names. Like, these are rich, old, dead white men and women, right? Yeah. 
and for it to now be, you know, that history to change over the years and now be in the hands of someone like you, a big deal, a really big deal. It's an honor. And why not? Yeah. yeah. No, ladies, I just want to thank you so much for coming and for being a part of this and for Thrillist for having us. I, this has been incredible. Oh my God, I feel like I'm, I'm part of like the coolest women's badass club. <laughs> I don't know how I got in here, but I'm so happy. It was such an honor to talk to all of you guys, seriously, and eat this food. Cheers. 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 Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. The American Chop House started in New York City. And I think it's a really, really beautiful thing. Um, you know, you look at the late 1800s and the history of beefsteak dinners. You know, political elections were won um, on the backs of beefsteak dinners.